Hey, Merry Christmas, everyone. Hey, Lori, Merry Christmas to you. And welcome back to the I Am Symposium. And today we've decided to go live. Um, and this is a virtual gathering space during these midwinter winds. And we're inviting you to warm your hearts at our fire. And Lori is one of the 18 wise women who are walking their talk and presenting this year. And you can find out more over at the I Am Symposium, but not now, because get ready for Lori Lothian, who has just emerged from an, a hole of awakening. And I don't know if that's up, down, around, but we're going to learn today. And she is a spiritual revolutionary, divine magic maker, magic maker and all-purpose scribe. Oh, she just can go on about herself, but we're, 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 we don't have time for all of this. You'll have to catch up with the emails because we want to hear everything you have to, to share today. So I'm so excited. Thanks, Renee. Man, you, your, your Christmas cheer is contagious. <laughs> you know what? I love Christmas. And I, I just can say I didn't always love Christmas, but I decided that I was going to make this magic for me. And how better to share it with somebody who is magical as you, who would love at first sight. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Eh? Let's, let's not go there. But you just <laughs> make me smile. Thank you so much for the great introduction. So as you know, it's been an interesting time for me to get ready to actually do something with the I Am Symposium. Um, because I've been uh, in a kind of a, a vortex, uh, at least in the last month, of some uh, reawakening um, in my own spiritual journey. And so I want to bring some of the, the, the gifts and the fruits of that process to us today. I'm just okay. doing some technical sharing back over here. So you just take right okay. on over. I'm, okay. I'm okay. here with my Christmas and my fire. Okay. Can you see my fire? So That's beautifully, I know I was looking at it, it's gorgeous. Um, so yeah, so the thing about the whole uh, spiritual uh, awakening gig and you know enlightenment satsangs, people getting awake and all of that, because um, my blog is The Awakened Dreamer, and I did start it in 2011 after having had a massive uh, disidentification with this fictional character called Lori, and then <laughs> moving into kind of a vast spaciousness for about four years. But what I noticed in the spiritual awakening journey, and I think this is probably more common than people would like to bring up, and I'm going to tie this into a couple of things, the I am, the I am presence, which is ironically the I am symposium. And I'm also going to tie in how that I am presence is easily available, even if we've got a little groggy and fallen back asleep to it. And the, one of the most fun parts about it is that my experience of magic, which to me is that uh, divine flow and perfect uh, timing and synchronistic uh, way of living that's filled with wonderment, uh, is even more, life is even more <clears throat> saturated mm -hmm. with that perfection and wonder, the deeper that we can uh, perceive reality and experience it from our I am quality of being rather than the mind you know, with all of his thoughts. So, here, back. <laughs> so here's, the, here's the cool part about awakening. I remember a story about Gangaji and Papa, her, her teacher Papaji, and it was this uh, day that Papaji said to her, you know, just stop. And those words were the catapult for her, like suddenly going, oh, just stop and bang. She hit this like, uh, full stop of the small self and a complete awakening of the, the vast true self, the stillness that we are. And oh, I, I, I always, oh, what's that noise? I always loved that story. <laughs> Who's oh, I'm sorry. I have my network on over there and I went to look. Oh, I love it. You were getting twice. No, it's perfect. There's more of us in the room. Magical. <laughs> There's lots of us. So anyway, I was in Mexico recently in a place called Troncones. It's just north of Ixtapa, uh, south of, I should say. And um, I, I, the woman's house I was staying at, this is like like three weeks ago, uh, she had a little book on her bedstand and I picked it up and, and it was called The uh, Impersonal Life. So if I'm here to bring anything of value to everybody today so that you can maybe benefit from my story rather than make it a story about me, is that if you can go online and Google uh, a book called The Impersonal Life. It's it's a free PDF download available to anybody anywhere in the world. And the reason that is is because it was written in like 1917 or 16, and now it's in the public domain. Mm -hmm. So just go ahead, The Impersonal Life. Uh, if you Google that, you'll come to a PDF, and you can go see where that takes you. Because there was a line in the beginning of that book at the very, very beginning. And I remember sitting up on top of the roof, listening to the roosters crow, 
the roof deck of this woman's house in Mexico and opening the book up my first morning there, I believe, and looking down and mm -hmm. the line. <laughs> It's okay. I love it. I love it. Looking at this line in the book that said, uh, "Be still and know that I am God." Now, just take the God out of there because I know that's a trigger point for people. Because what I took when I read that, and the whole personal life book is about being in touch with one I am consciousness. And I'm trying to communicate with all the people watching, but I'm having a really hard time. So, everyone, sorry. I'm just gonna. Sit here. I know how it is when you try to multitask when I'm on YouTube. I have the same issue sometimes when I'm trying to do, watch the comments and do the thing. I know. So, we'll have our production teams in a couple of years, everyone. But I right know. now it's me and her and, and I'm trying to, hey, Kimberly and um, Michaela and there. John. So, well, I could do that on my phone, actually. I can look at what people No, no, saying. because it's going to come through on the, oh, maybe uh, not on yours. Just keep talking. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Desiree, oh, Kimberly's here. Your your fans are all here, so just oh, know you the mages are here. Yeah, oh, wait, they're just yeah, sharing Christmas with us. I love the mages. Okay, this is a group of people who graduated from a few of my classes for anyone else listening online where I teach about synchronicity and magic. So there are some participants in my courses. So the be still and know that I am doesn't need God at the end. It doesn't need any modifier. It's simply be still and know that I am, and, and the mm. I am is oneself. And it was just happened to be one of those weird confluences of, you know, dawn on a roof deck with cro roosters crowing, and uh, perhaps, you know, a, a timing of something. And I, I entered into a, a state of um, deep, profound remembrance of that truth at the level of um, that which is beyond and between thoughts. And, and, you know, it's not that it's unfamiliar. That's, that's that emergent experience in 2011 that lasted pretty solidly for quite a few years. But I noticed that it was becoming more of a memory of a truth than an actual living truth. And since this experience or the shift of awareness again, about two and a half, three weeks ago, three weeks ago, I've now not returned back into this kind of um, <laughs> collapse self again, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with this set sense of small self that we have, but it's it's actually bound up like a tight knot. And the, uh. knot, the knot is made of thoughts and thoughts and feelings and, and experiences and sensations. And it's very much like when you're in a movie theater and you're so caught up in the movie, just so enraptured that you actually forget that you are the one on the seat, you know, going, you know watching it, watching it all unfold. And that's the truth of, the, of our true self. And the, what we watch unfold when we return to the I am is we even watch ourself unfold. Like we even watch the Lori unfold as a character in, in the story. So the magic part, which is the key because it's magic and I am, is that I want everyone to consider that it's not a, um, that when we, when we play with synchronicity, like the perfect parking spot or, you know, the signs that line up or, you know, we, we think of something that um, we want, might want to do and then suddenly three people tell us about that various thing. So, you know, I think I should go to Mexico and then three people tell you about Mexico within a day, you know, you're supposed to do it. So that sense of being guided and in a state of flow and in a state of wonderment with synchronicity is the natural state of your being. And it, when you're in that state of connecting with that synchronistic flow and trust, it's a big surrender really. You're actually in the I am already. That's, you're already there. So mm -hmm. if you don't get you know, that book and read it and have the same kind of profound shift that I did, which is not always gonna happen, probably won't. It just happened to be mm -hmm. a good timing for me. Then I'm still encouraging people to notice that way of being in the world as it occurs and pay more attention to it, more attention to the synchronicity and more attention to that phenomena of extraordinary flow. Because you'll notice that when you're in that state of flow and synchronicity and messages and divine timing and guidance that you're actually in a deep state of trust. Like it's almost a place of be still, you know, mm -hmm. and know that I am because that stillness is without worry and that stillness is without fear and doubt and anxiety. And then what's always there, what's always available suddenly is seen, which is that we are completely held, always held in this most profound place of love. Hmm. And it doesn't come from somebody. It's just what is, you know. 
Um, this morning, I was listening to somebody talk somewhere online about the American way and the pursuit of happiness. And I thought about that for a bit this morning because it does tie in with magic again, and I am. I think that there's been a, almost like a sleight of hand with that, uh, that constitutional um, right, which is the pursuit of happiness. Because it's almost like if you want to narrow linguistic program it, you've guaranteed that you're always going to be chasing for it. <laughs> you know, an, al an inalienable right to pursue happiness. How about an inalienable right to be happiness? Because that's what you are, and you're actually peace too. And and so, what one of the Christmas messages I have for anyone listening today is just stop that whole idea that there's this peace is just around, around the bend or just even a minute away. Like when I finally get the turkey in the oven, I can have some peace. Or when I finally, you know, get the guests all out of my home and it's quiet, I'll have stillness and peace or happiness, or I'll be happy when the guests get here, blah, blah, blah. Happy when, peaceful when, still when. There is no when, it's actually here. It's just right now, it's just here. It's like I call that another other. Oh, I like that. It's a, express that to me again. So it's an another other. It's just when, you know, so there's just another, there's always just another other. It's always when I get this, when I get that. I wanted to write a book many years ago called Another Other. It was going to be kind of like, oh yeah, and that one and that one and that one. So I just love that. Exactly. And Christmas is a time when that is very much up in people's face, right? Because it's either a very sad time for people when they don't have the, the holly jolly Christmas and family isn't around them. And so they're reminded of this kind of sense of mm -hmm. uh, what they're not experiencing or they're pursuing it, of course, in the pursuit of, you know, gifts and giving gifts and buying gifts. And it's kind of like an accelerated version of, you know, the, the other because she's like, I've been caught up in it many times in my life. You know, the Christmas spirit is often an acquisition and a racing and a chasing or a letdown. You so, know, I did, sorry, one second. I just I saw it last night that um, I was so grateful that we were having this I Am Winter Solstice Symposium at this time for yeah. all of those people who had been disappointed by Christmas or disappointed by the not getting or the wanting or that what, you know, you're calling that you know, that pursuit that really you can just sit here and, and gain wisdom from, from Lori. And I'll share her video as well, along with this, when I shared this, because there was so much in it last night and we'll get cut off at after six more minutes. So go back on, let me. Yeah. yeah. So the Christmas blessing in the YouTube video I put out yesterday was just because I felt really compelled to share that aspect of uh, where you can feel compassion for yourself in Christmas, in the Christmasness of life, you know, especially at this time of year. Um, there's something about um, the simplicity of the I am that I want to also share because I mean because it's so fresh for me right now I mean I can't guarantee that I won't fall back into a snooze button sleep again so while it's still fresh I want to try to explain some experience of this that maybe resonates with anyone listening just enough that it might trigger your own memory of the truth you know I can't count the times I've been looking all over the house through my glasses I mean literally looking everywhere under pillows under the sofa yada yada I'm known for losing my glasses and I can't count the times that I've just stopped and laughed out loud and realized they're on my head <laughs> <laughs> like I've done that so many times that's why I got the permanent ones so that's I didn't bad. lose them anymore <laughs> so, that's not a bad idea so but the times that it's been like just so silly to be uh, actually searching for something that I actually already have and it's on my head, but I can't see it because I'm doing this. That's kind of what it feels like too when you're looking for this kind of, this peace and this happiness and this uh, serenity that you know is available, but you're like, you're all over the place for it. And it's actually on, it's not on your head, it is what you are. Mm -hmm. so, so it's so intimate, it's so close, it's just so available. And the fast track to it, so the shortcut, um, besides to uh, follow the synchronicity and notice who's experiencing the wonder because the wonderment is experienced by your very true I am quality. Wonderment and awe are states of being, not emotions. Is that, you know, when you're just sitting down maybe in the morning having that cup of coffee, I find mornings are still for me, especially if I'm up at 6 a.m., which I have been lately. And and you just sit there and before your, your whole mind is filled with the idea of what it is to do, you know, what you have to do or what you should be doing or what you didn't do uh, to stop and 
and just like be in the moment with your tea, your coffee, or your whatever, your orange juice, whatever you're drinking. Um, and and there's this always a gap between our thoughts. I mean, nobody has a, nobody thinks nonstop. I don't believe that's even possible, you know. And but without having to take a meditation class and learn how to get into a state of samadhi, why not just notice that space that is in between the two thoughts and see how long you can be in that space and experience the nothing between the thinking? Because that nothing is not nothing. It's everything. <laughs> it's all of it. It's the whole shebang. It is, it is you, right? And you are all of it. And so it's such a rich, alive, vibrant um, radiant space between those thoughts and um, thoughts are useful i mean they're highly useful especially if you have to use a you know practically you have to use a thought to do something practical like you know i think i need to you know turn the car this way you know or whatever thoughts can be a very practical tool but the thought that, get, that has run rampant with our lives and run away with us is the thought that i am myself as Lori or renee and that is just a constellation of feelings, thoughts, and sensations bundled up together. And it's not without value because it's not like the bad, evil personality ego. It is simply just a small portion of what you are. And so you're kind of collapsed into it temporarily. So I say, you know, Christmas message, uh, get the book. I, the impersonal life. It's a shorty, it's quick, it's dirty, it's easy, it's fast. You know, download it, PDF, and see what happens when you read it. And don't get caught up in the word God because it was written in 1917. Um, get, just let the word God float away and just stick with the very basic principles in the book. And if you don't find comfort and peace within that book, like I did, I'd be a bit surprised because it's an extraordinary book. And I was surprised I hadn't read it before, that I'd never heard about it, the impersonal life. And the second part is see what you can do in that space between your thoughts. See, see who's actually in that space. <laughs> and, Love that. Yeah. We only have like a couple of minutes left. And uh, one thing, when I was in Chile a million years ago, the, the shaman gave me this name and she said that it meant the sound between passing things. Ooh. And what else is the wind? And last night at church, which people think, oh, you went to a Catholic church? I'm there like, yes. And every time he said word, I thought wind. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I love your picture of the of the mass. I saw. Oh my God, it was beautiful. They have more money. They they took four million dollars in last year in the collection baskets. It's one of the wealthier churches in the world. Um, so, Lori, I'm going to add your 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 video to this. And everybody who's watching, we we wanted to keep it short. Plus, Be Live only gave me 20 minutes for free, so we're kind of like that was their gift to me and our gift to you this holiday. And I love you. No, oh, Brene, thank you. And it was just like, you know, perfect. I, I didn't have anything prepared because I was lost in the vastness for so long. So thank you for bearing with me on that. <laughs> I was a little worried whether or not she'd come out from that hole she was hiding in. But Merry <laughs> Christmas to you and, and to everyone who celebrates this way. Cook, be with family and celebrate as you will. And stick with us for the I Am Symposium because there's all the way through New Year's Day and I'm and there's so much more to come. Oh, hi, Gail. Gail Larson's here. Oh, hey, Gail. And, and there's many people. Uh, Erica's read the book. So <gasps> wait until you read the comments. So you're going to have a wonderful I'll, go I'll back. Go and listen. Get All right. You still do that. And we love you. And <laughs> join us over at the I Am Symposium. Lots more to come, including Sandra Ingerman on New Year's Eve. So Oh, I can't wait. I love Sandra. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Great. Okay. Love you all. Bye. Bye-bye, Renee. Bye, everyone.